Hey, you guys, Wendy Clinky Blue Cat Studio. All right, we're going to do this thing today. We're going to try painting with a palette knife. Not that I am trying it. I've done this. It's just been a little while. So let's go ahead and have some fun. I'm going to do a pair. So why is my thing orange? It's actually um, burnt sienna. And it's just a nice way to kind of prime the canvas that way. If I miss a spot, I have this lovely rich orange peeking through. And it's kind of one of those sort of fine artists, little tri tricks of the trade. So today I'm using mostly tube paints in the series one and series two with the occasional bit of heavy body thrown in. So I'll try to talk about what I'm, what I'm grabbing. So we're going to start with some white and I'm going to do the pear first. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the green in here and just kind of mix. And since that's a little bit too green, add some yellow, kind of tone it down a smidge and call me crazy, a touch of red just to not a lot of red, but just a corner to kind of soften and mute. All right. Oof. Let's see. Let's do this, girl. So we're going to keep it real simple, right? Just going to kind of place in the pear shape. And it kind of makes a really wonderful kind of scrapey, scrapey feeling, scrapey sound. And that paint is going on really thick. So this doesn't necessarily work super well for, for acrylic craft paints because acrylic craft paints tend to be a lot drippier. And so don't feel like you gotta go out and buy these. You can still do palette painting or palette knife painting with acrylic craft paints. Just sometimes you'll have little points of frustration. All right, so we have a basic pair and uh, it's very pale, pale green. So I'm gonna come in and just grab some more of that green, a little bit more white, touch of the blue. So this one is a turquoise green Grumbacher and just kind of make a little bit darker color there. It's pretty intense. So add some yellow to tweak it. So a lot of mixing going on here and then a tiny touch of red. Why on earth am I adding red? It just mutes the tone a smidge. So we're going to kind of take the, some of the green here, go on the outside. Again, this is oof. Going quick here today. I got too much red in there, and that's fine because I'll I'll fix it. So I'm going to decide that my light is coming from the right side, and the shadows are going to be on the left side. Now I'll add a pinch of the green in there, just to kind of just the plain green. And the green I'm using is it's phthalo yellow green. In fact, I'm running a little low, so we'll add some more. And for the most part, when I'm using these kinds of paints, I tend to do more mixing. I rarely use them straight out of the straight out of the um, the tube. Although I did a little bit here, so oh, this guy's getting super goofy. It's been a while, so pardon me while I get a little bit messy here. And I'm working with a lot of wet paint. So having a place to offload excess paint from your palette knife, and a palette knife is literally just a plastic thing. Oh, <laughs> John, I'm not painting a kayak. I don't think, well, well that's like actually really kind of an interesting, an interesting concept. All right, so I'm going to grab some white and yellow, mix it together, and kind of add a yellowy tone on this part of the pair. So maybe it's like, is it the Bartlett's? What are the white and, not white, but the, the, the pale yellow and and green ones. And notice I kind of have a gap right in there, an orange spot. Um, hey, Crystal. I may just leave that orange spot. I'm not quite sure because I think it's kind of working. And I'm going for fast and loose here in case you're wondering like, wow, what are you doing, girl? I am going for fast and loose. So now I want to add a little bit of a blush to it. So pulling out some white, I'm going to, oh, I'm so stuck. Yeah, I'll grab some of this red. So the red I'm using is a crimson. Ah, dropping things. So it's a Winsor Newton Galleria crimson. And we'll just kind of mix that in. It's going to be a bit of a pink tone. I want it warmer. So touch a yellow. Can you see, oh, you can't even see my palette. I'm sorry. And just kind of add a little blush kind of right in here. 
Yep. A little bit more blush right in here. I want a smidge more red and a smidge more yellow and then white to tone it. That's getting a little loud, isn't it? One more red, white. And so this is fun because it really allows you to just kind of let go and go to town. Now I'm going to grab a touch of the magenta and pop that in also for fun because I can, right? You guys know me. I always like to throw in a touch of the unexpected. All right. So that is a very loose and I've got some kind of, I don't know if it's StreamYard, which is the app I'm using or if it's, um, or if it's my lighting, I'm really struggling to actually get true to life colors, but that's kind of accurate there. And it's so wet and gooky right now. So I'm going to give the pear a minute to sit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create, mix a background color. So I'm going to use this, the turquoise color, grab a big hunk of white. I'm going to mix a turquoise. So we'll begin with kind of a turquoise backing here. And I'm just going to kind of drag it. And I'm going to leave just a little bit of that orangish tone hanging out in the, in the background. I'm not, I'm not going to make it all go away because I do really kind of love the way that looks. turquoise and this is like very much a scrapey process right like I gotta scrape this paint onto the onto the canvas so in some cases even kind of scrub it in and I know this is a little outside of our, our norm but you know I, I did a pair a few years back and saw it the other day I was like oh my gosh we got to do that one again it's so much fun Plus, I want to show you how loose and free you can be. Yeah, Crystal, I have one, two, three, four ring lights going, and my lighting is just like, nope. Although it got better once I turned on more light. I just, I don't know. StreamYard, I feel like, is doing weird things. Like, I feel like I get better. It looks better. Hey, Regina! So, oh, my girls! Oh, my, oh, my tribe sisters! All right, so we have the darker turquoise on the bottom, and yeah, I got a lot of the orange um, still showing. Excuse me, what is it again? I used to know this burnt sienna. I used to know that one by heart, but now I'm like forgetting often. So I used to work almost exclusively in kind of these more earth tones and would mix all my colors, but now that I've pretty much decided that hot pink is my spirit animal, um, I've had to go with some of the non-mineral pigments. And so what I'm using here today is really almost, almost exclusively mineral pigments. Not quite. The magenta is probably not a mineral. I don't know what Theo is. I thought it was Thalo. But titanium white is definitely a mineral pigment. And so what I often find is um, if you want really heavy duty, good, thick coverage of paint, um, the mineral pigments, so the true cadmium yellows versus the craft paint cadmium yellows and the ochres, um, the titaniums, and there's a couple other of them. I think it's this, the siennas and maybe the lamp blacks. Those are all the, the, the mineral pigments versus the more modern stuff. And so you tend to get better, better coverage with them. So some of the more modern colors like quinacrid and magenta, which is truly one of my most favorites, um, that one tends to be very, um, very transparent, but oh my gosh, the intensity and gorgeousness of the color is, is, you know, bar none. Okay. So this is super roughed in, but I kind of absolutely love all that orange sticking through, right? Burnt sienna, raw sienna, something sienna. I have all the siennas, apparently just a big tube of burnt. Okay. I'm um, going to offload the stuff from my palette knife. Now we want to add a little bit more shading in here. Uh, so we're going to make a violet. You see violet here? No, me neither. So let's see how this goes. I'm going to grab some of this turquoise and I should have just gotten a new plate. But again, this was like the lightning round and I'm grabbing some of that magenta 
I'm going to mix the magenta and the Theo violet or the, the violet. Okay, I got no words today. The magenta and the teal. And that just created a gorgeous violet. So here we go. And okay, light is here, shade is here. Roll up my sleeve. And I'm just going to kind of start to place a little bit of that purple with the palette knife. So again, it's roughed in, but oh my gosh, it's so freeing to paint with a palette knife because you cannot be accurate. You can't, you just can't. And I don't know, I love that part. So grabbing a little bit more of the magenta, a little less of the teal, and just kind of adding a little bit more of that purpley tone in there. And so you really want to kind of focus on getting the darkest points of that directly underneath the pear or the thing, like kind of right at where it's coming in contact with the surface. And then it's allowed to get a little bit lighter. Let's see, I'm going to add some white and hopefully not mess it up too bad. There we go as it comes out and then we can kind of just smoosh a little. All right. So now we have a fun little purpley violety shade. I might tone under here too. The other reason I'm all lightning round is I just ordered Chinese food. So I'm like, all right, let's whip out a fun painting. Let you get on your way for Friday and uh, see if I can't get there in time to pick it up before it gets cold. Totally insane, right? Yes, exactly, Regina. Like letting go of control is, it's fun and it's, it's difficult. Okay, so we have good base colors here. I need to add a stem and I want to add just a touch more yellow. So I'm just squeezing a very little bit out. And this is a, a cadmium medium hue. It's also another um, uh, mineral pigment. So well, I guess I didn't rinse that so well. That's okay. So I'm mixing it right into the green zone. A little bit of white. That was a bad idea. I'm going to wipe this sucker off. Starting over. I'll just go in here where I had that whitish yellow bit. A little bit more white. Can you see that? Yeah, home kind of. There we are. So I'm trying to get a light, more electric white color. And we're going to add a little highlight kind of, all right, screw it. We're going to go with pure white. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everything's so gooey. It's all catching each other and all the things. All right. We're just going to go with a pure white highlight. So add a little something kind of here, a little something kind of here, and something along the top. Well, Tick at the bottom, wipe it down. Now a bit of brown to create the stem. All right, can we sort of see that highlight? Yeah, I know, Chinese, so good. Yeah, I love the purple for the shadow. It's, it's like my new favorite trick. Um, actually, it's not a new trick, but it's, it is my, one of my favorite things to do. All right, so this stem is gonna make me wanna screen. So I, I put some of the, um, raw umber which is this dark brown also another one of those just gorgeous amazing like if you ever need to sketch with um with paint that brown is a good one to sketch and i'm using the side edge of the knife and just a little bit and i'm going to kind of just kind of get place a little bit of that stick kind of coming out maybe see if i can get a bit of a curve on it all right there we go so now we have a cute little stem feel like it wants to be just a smidge a smidge more we're gonna be extra so for a long time i solely used the um the raw umber to create shadows but once i kind of clued in on the violet and on the very purple various purple options um, there was just no going back so now i'm going to grab a little bit of that pear green again get get some paint right on the edge of the knife blade and add just little little ticks of it kind of on. Whoa, here's where I, I miss my liner brush. I've gotten so spoiled. There we are. Just little tiny ticks of the green. All right, how do we get that to show? Or oh, lights, come on. Something like that. Anyways. 
And I think actually that's a pretty, a pretty solid roughed in loose, super loose pair, right? I mean, it's not a hundred percent realistic. I've certainly done better in my day, but I mean, that was fun. And how long did we spend doing it? That was 15 minutes. So I challenge you to get outside your comfort zone, grab some paints. And again, you can use craft paints. And if you even have just a tube of like slightly higher end titanium white, if you're using that and just mixing some of the other pigments and colors in from your craft paints, you can totally get away with it. Um, yeah, Regina, I love the, the terracotta showing through too. Like I, it allows me to just kind of relax and throw the paint on. Um, and so we didn't use that many colors here. You know, we created our own purple. I splooged a whole bunch of brown for one tiny stem. So anyways, have a good one. And thanks for joining me. I had fun. I hope you did too. And if you end up doing something like this, whether it's an apple or a pear, they're very simple, right? Go ahead and post it or email me or send me a message. Show me your work. I totally want to see this. And um, you can also post it in the Let's Paint with Blue Cat. I don't think this video is live there, but I'll make sure that I forward it so everybody can see it or so can see it. Whatever I'm trying to say. Y'all, it's been a long day. I did my taxes last night, so I'm super excited because that's like one major weight off my chest. Have a great weekend. I'm going camping with Girl Scouts, going to teach them how to kayak and imagine, you know, I don't know, 10, 12, 12 year old girls all learning how to capsize and recover boats. That's going to be the weekend. It's going to be awesome. Bye. I love you guys.